Welcome back to Method of the Meanness. I'm Burley Mullins, and before we get into today's episode, I want to uh, talk to you guys about a few things. Um, I know it's been a while since my last video. You know, it's been a minute since I've provided an update on this particular mead. Uh, it's been pretty quiet. Uh, I'll give you everything you need in this uh, particular video. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about this part of the hobby, the making the YouTube videos. And, uh, that's getting a little expensive. <laughs> um, you know, uh, that's pretty much the main reason why I haven't been making as many meads on this channel and why, I, uh, why I've slowed down a bit. And so I've been mulling the idea of starting a Patreon and I thought I'd reach out to you guys and see what you think. Is that something you're interested in? Uh, I have a couple of ideas for a few tiers. Um, you know, obviously just a floor level tier to get you in, uh, doing polls, getting, uh, early releases for videos, um, and, you know, having more of a say in what happens in the channel, sir. So starting with a base level tier, you know, that will get you access to, you know, just about everything. Um, you know, everything that's going on in the Patreon that has community input, you know, polls, um, helping me decide what, you know, the order of things, uh, get early insights into things that are coming up and early released videos. Um, maybe I'll do some like Q and A's, um, you know, more like live stream content, uh, if that's what you're all interested in. Um, and then as the tiers go up, you know, get more and more involved. Um, you know, maybe there's a tier where I uh, help you out directly with your recipes on your end. If you have specific questions and you want some one-on-one -on -one help, I'd be more than happy to help out in, in that given situation. Um, there might even be a joke tier for way too much money. Don't join that tier. Um, where I like engrave your name in my boil kettle, like on my boil kettle. I have the tools and the know-how to do that so we can make that happen. I don't know. Uh, if you have thoughts on any of this, please leave a comment below. Um, and uh, with that out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and uh, get this show on the road with this mead. All right, let's get right back into it. Um, this, if you'll recall, is the uh, me recreating the first meet that I ever did while giving tips and pointers along the way and explaining what I'm doing differently and why. Um, you'll remember I did recommend doing a traditional mead instead of a uh, fruit mead or a spiced mead. Um, for your first one, but it's something that I'm willing to, um, something that I've uh, decided to work with, you know, going off of my original recipe, more or less, um, to go along with it. Now, on this episode, I'm going to deviate slightly from my recommendations, you know, to do this as cheaply as possible and still have a good mead and a good time making it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use the, uh, the cane siphon that I have, um, but this one is absolutely a, uh, you know, a quality of life change. Uh, you can absolutely use a regular vinyl tube and siphon it, you know, the standard way just fine at this stage in the game. Um, the fermentation here should be pretty much done. The only way to know for sure is to take hydrometer or refractometer meeting, uh, readings over time and see the differences, if there are any. Uh, and if it stops, then, you know, it has stopped. Uh, the fermentation was a little sluggish for this. Um, I think that's down to the amount of nutrients the yeast was able to get from that boiled baker's yeast that I added. 
uh, I think maybe doubling or even tripling uh, what I did would be uh, my current recommendation for this, um, for uh, getting the proper nutrients in there. Um, because the fermentation did slow down after a pretty strong start. Um, and I think it's down to that. Now I'm moving it from one jug into another plastic jug. I'm going to uh, keep the balloon airlock um, for a while because I believe that even though the ferment primary fermentation is probably done, I haven't been doing the testing. Um, there are risks involved with testing over time, um, include, like, including risk of contamination. And this time I just decided to go by uh, the amount of flocculation, and um, which is the yeast that's accumulated at the bottom. And uh, you know, visible bubbles, I don't recommend doing that. Um, it's just what I'm going with. There's still some yeast in suspension, they might activate a bit being moved into secondary. And the balloon allows for that. Um, and then after a few days, I'm probably gonna switch back to this actual cap uh, with this jug. And it should be good to go with the cap. But of course, if it's not, you'll find out along with me. <laughs> so, we'll go ahead and get this siphoned off. I'll do a quick taste of it to see where it is in relation to my first mead. I can already tell you it's not going to be nearly as sweet as my first mead. I squeezed as much out of three pounds of honey as I could into the first mead, maybe a little bit more, and I used baker's yeast. So it did not eat through all of the sugars. It was quite sweet, um, but it was good. I didn't know what good mead tasted like, so it didn't deter me from making my mead. Um, that step of unconscious incompetence was very important for my growth, I think. Um, but I could still taste the honey, I could still taste the alcohol, I could still taste the apples and the spices, and it was still good. That's the thing. You know, I'm anticipating better results with my knowledge, but I still had good results with the lack of experience and the baker's yeast. So. You know, this does have recommendations, but these are not ironclad. Um, you know, if you want to make mead with baker's yeast, by all means, go right ahead. Um, you'll just have a little bit more variability in your results. And it might taste a little bready. It might taste a little bready. Uh, certainly something that I've experienced with my meads in the past. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this siphoned off. I'm using the cane siphon. You've seen it on this channel before. Um, so I'm probably going to skip past this or uh, fast forward. Editor Burley will make that decision. I really need to invest in a bucket for this, because a bowl is too shallow. Which goes back to that <laughs> Patreon discussion we had at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> okay, now that it's safened off, you do get a much more clear picture of the color here. I'm very excited by that. It's a uh, pale amber sort of color. Very pleased. Uh, some of the color seems to have uh, maybe leached off of the spices or the apple along with the honey color that we're getting. <sighs> yeah, it smells very sharp, very young. This will benefit greatly with some aging, with some cork. Um, yeah, there are some uh, yeast faults that need to come out of this. Um, and I think that'll happen with age. Um, it does taste a bit yeasty. Um, but uh, the apple is presenting very quietly. The spices are not overpowering anything that's going on. It's pretty dry, um, but not absolutely bone dry. Um, this will pick up some character over time. 
Uh, the acidity is there from the apple, the malic acid. I'm really glad I did not go with Narbonne yeast. It does convert malic acid into alcohol and you lose a lot of that apple character um, and some of the acid that's here. And it's really giving this mead structure. I think this one just needs time. That's all. I don't mean the spice. Uh, herb. I don't mean the herb time or herb for my British viewers, uh, the both of you. But this did ferment to just about where I expected it would. I'm very pleased with that. Now that some of the sharpness has sort of been oxygenated, aerated out of the glass, I'm getting a lot of floral notes. And that's one of the, um, one of the aromas and tastes promoted by the Montrachet yeast that I used. And it is building on the malic acid that is present in the mead. And this is going to be a beautiful, floral, fruity, mildly spiced mead. Subtle in its presentation, but full in its body when it's done aging. Uh, I'm really looking forward to what this is going to do in like a few months or like a year. Um, just because it's inexpensive doesn't mean it's not time consuming. <laughs> uh, this next stage of the mead. Uh, some of my meads, uh, as you've already seen, have aged quickly and have come out beautifully in that short amount of time. And some of them, this one, namely, uh, you can tell going right into it that there's a sharpness, there's an edge to it, there's a bite that just needs to calm down and have the edges sanded off. And there's something underneath that will come out uh, when aged in a bottle. And if left too long, that beautiful, floral, fruity essence that's hanging out in the background that will come forth will also be sanded away over time. And that's one of the reasons that wines and meads can be aged for too long in a bottle. The older is not always the better, and there are many times when you can let it go too long. And it'll be past its prime. Uh, I think this one will stand the test of time for, you know, a couple of years in those bottles. It'll still be, you know, it'll still be delightful. But I hope I catch it when it's at its peak, and I hope you're here with me. <laughs> Don't forget to uh, hit that subscribe button, uh, like the video, comment down below. And if you watched that earlier section where I'm talking about, you know, the potential for opening a Patreon, please let me your opinion, you know, let your opinion be known below. Uh, I have some really cool projects in mind. Um, they're just going to be pretty expensive. Um, and the only way I can think of uh, funding them, uh, because I'm not monetized, <laughs> is through external sources like Patreon. Um, <clears throat> I have plans to do more barrel aging. I've done it in the past. I want to do more of it in the future uh, with this channel. I have plans to um, do some really cool ancient, you know, mead and wine making techniques um, that I think will produce results for some of the meads I have in mind for this channel. Some of the sci-fi fantasy meads going back to why I created the channel in the first place gonna be a bit expensive. <laughs> I would love to see, you know, I, I would love to be able to do them sooner rather than later. Um, and so if you're thinking that's something that might be for you, you know, please let it be known in the comments below. I, I have to go off of what you guys tell me. This has been Method of the Meanness, and I have been Early Mullins.
നമസ്കാരം